The first step is to observe the movement of the cow from a safe distance. Assess its conformation and posture. Observe gait from the side and in a straight line towards and away from you. Assess coordination, foot placement and weight distribution. Assess the curvature of the spine. Look at muscle tone and symmetry and take note of any visible atrophy. Once observation during movement is complete, it's time to firmly palpate the cow to identify important landmarks. It's important to approach the cow towards the shoulder in a calm and confident manner. Start at the head with the wings of Atlas right behind the ears. Feel for the seven individual cervical vertebrae down from the Atlas. This is very close to the jugular groove where the jugular vein is. Often students feel for the vertebrae higher up. This is actually the nuchal ligament. Further down are the thoracic vertebrae. There are 13 thoracic vertebrae, each associated with a rib. The body of the thoracic vertebrae runs as shown. To count the ribs, it's easiest to go caudal to cranial. It's important to notice how large the dorsal spinous processes are. To find the xiphoid process of the sternum, it's often easiest to find the navel and work your way forward, about a hand width away. It's easy to palpate with a cow in dorsal recumbency. When identifying the lumbar vertebrae, we palpate their transverse processes. There are six vertebrae and six transverse processes. However, the transverse process of L6 cannot be palpated as it is situated behind the tuber coxae. The identification of transverse processes, particularly L1, depends on the body condition and build of the cow. The transverse processes are important landmarks for paravertebral anesthesia. You then have the sacrum, formed of five fused sacral vertebrae. It meets the coccygeal vertebrae at the sacral coccygeal junction. You can identify this junction by moving the tail up and down. This is an important landmark for epidural anesthesia. The forelimb starts off with the scapula. It has a cranial border and a caudal border. The spine of the scapula can be felt here. There is a triangular site for intramuscular injections outlined by the nuchal ligament dorsally, the cervical vertebrae ventrally and the cranial border of the scapula caudally. The caudal border of the scapula leads down to the greater tubercle of the humerus and the shoulder joint. The humerus goes down to the olecranon and the elbow joint, overlying the third to fifth intercostal space. You have the radius, ulna and carpus. Palpation of the distal limb below the carpus is preferred when the foot is lifted in a crush. Onto the hind limbs, you have the tuber coxae, also known as hook bones, and the tuber ischii, also known as pin bones. In between those, you have the hip joint. The palpable landmark for the joint is the greater trochanter of the femur. The femur goes down to the stifle. It's higher up than you might expect. It's easier to palpate if you lift the skin and if the cow is moving around a little bit. You then have the tibia down to the tarsus, or hock joint, and the point of hock. 